Black Mamba. I picked the most dangerous ones in the world. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we're looking at a really serious but incredibly fascinating topic. The man called Tim Freedy, or as a lot of people now call him, Venom Man, who basically has managed to self-immunize so well against snake venoms that they want to make a universal anti-venom from his blood. This is an incredible story, we're going to look at what he did, but we're also going to look at a few other people who are doing the same thing again. We may be on the verge of quite a breakthrough. How? Well, you can start by thanking the man who has spent 18 years letting some of the deadliest snake species on the planet bite him. He injected himself with more than 650 doses of snake venom. The video you're looking at is of Tom, of Tim Freedy. And as you can see, he's not exactly going Samuel L. Jackson on these guys. No, this passion project of his started when he was bitten by a snake at five years old. I love how the newsreader is stumbling over her words because she is just so shocked and weirded out by what this guy has done. Okay, do it. Ready? Go for it. Ah, two bites. Got me twice. PNG type here, and you saw it. That's a bite that uh, most of us we'd have almost zero chance of surviving. And for him, you can tell this is run of the mill. It's no big deal. He has an incredible immunity, and it's taken a lot of work. He's very methodical about what he does. It isn't just some kind of whack job. I picked the most dangerous ones in the world: black mambas, taipans, cobras, crates, yep. coral snakes, rattlesnakes. I take it out and I basically let it bite my arm. Two bites, nice. And the reason I do that is for shock value to bring awareness for snake bite. I wasn't looking to be a YouTube star or anything like that or, you know, it's all about the science for me, 100%. And when I was doing it, I sat back after about a year and just realized that people died from snake bite and I wasn't dying. So at that point I decided I have to reach out to every scientist on the planet. So Tim basically created a procedure that allowed broad recognition of, the, of many, many different toxins, and that recognition allowed him to be protected from snake bites. And what we're hoping to do is take that same protection, but not have to have everyone undergo 18 years of immunization and snake bites ultimately, but instead isolate and identify the best antibodies. This guy has crossed all boundaries, basically. So me from a a zoology background or a scientific background all of my gut instinct is to say don't do this whatever you do this isn't the right way to do things you know there's people who study venom who have phds and you know they've got lab coats and all the rest this guy has completely gone around all of that he's gone around academia he's done this his own way he's you know visionary in some respects and he's achieved a result of such incredible neutralizing broadly neutralizing antibodies in his bloodstream that they're going to be able to use that to save possibly thousands of lives around the world. He milked the venom from the snake before injecting it into his veins. But it was such a small amount that he was unharmed, and this allowed him to build up antibodies. Over the next 20 years, he did this 700 times, injecting more and more venom. And eventually, he built up a tolerance. He's now been bitten over 200 times by some of the world's most deadly snakes, and he survived each one. Eventually, his blood could be used to create a universal anti venom saving people from all kinds of snake bites something that is important to say with this case is that yes it is cheaper and it's easier to store one anti-venom in some regions and it is a really good a way of doing things but it's important to remember that the reason it's so important is because a lot of people don't go to the hospital with the correct snake identification. If you live in an area where there's five different types of highly venomous snakes, some of them might be related, some of them might be distantly related, and that lack of ID is is, is going to make it so much harder for doctors to treat and give the correct anti-venom. For example, me, I don't know much about motorbikes, and if I got hit by one crossing the road, I'd probably have as much chance of identifying it as someone who doesn't know about snakes has of identifying a snake that bit them when they stepped on it in the woods. So it is something that because of that, you know, that lack of specificity is going to probably save thousands of lives in the long run, particularly in countries like India and, 
who knows that elsewhere. This guy has been letting venomous snakes bite him for the past 18 years on purpose. Meet Tim Freed, a former truck mechanic who's taken over 700 doses of venom from some of the deadliest snakes on earth. Cobras, crates, taipans, and mambas. Why? Aside from a very strong bid for a dog. I'll just pause for a second here. He is not just taking bites. He's also injecting himself or microdosing, I guess you could say, with, with small doses of venom in between and building immunity. It's not just bites all the time because doing that is, is quite risky unless you've built up immunity through injecting first. One award, snake bites kill 140,000 people every year and maim three times as many. Current anti-venoms only work if they match the exact snake species. And even then, venom can vary so much between individuals of the same species because of diet or geography that treatments can still fail. Tim wanted to see if he could train his immune system to survive anything any snake could throw at him. And despite several visits to the hospital in the process, help build a universal anti-venom that's effective no matter what bites you. And it turns out, it kind of worked. Tim Freedy has, in his blood, broadly neutralizing antibodies. Antibodies like this, neutralizing antibodies, are generally something that responds to pathogens, so bacteria or viruses. But they learn to interpret and attack different strains of, uh, well, different varieties of proteins and enzymes. So in the case of snake venom, it's not an infectious disease, it's not a pathogen but you still have antibodies that can identify it based on these, these signals and neutralize it. Dancing with snakes. For Bill Haast, it isn't a religion, it's an obsession. So I just can't give it up yet. It's snake oil he's after. A deadly juice we call venom. He's been doing this serpent two-step for more than 50 years. Bill Haast is another amazing example of someone who gained a high degree of immunity to snake bite to the point where his blood could be used in transfusions to save bite victims. But what I really want to know from you all in this video is if you think Mr. Haast's long life was thanks to snake venom. That's what interests me about his story because we'll, we'll find out how long he lived in a minute. But Haast isn't doing it for the money. Snakes are in his blood. Literally. Let me have a four tenths. Haast has been taking injections of poisonous snake venom every week since 1948. I started injecting with cobra venom just to see if I could uh, build up antibodies and uh, resist snake bite. Sounds, you know, insane to the rest of us, but the early anti-venoms, particularly in his time, were almost, I think they were all derived from horses, and they had a, a fairly high rate of anaphylaxis if you did have them. So, I mean, there was a massive degree of risk in what he was doing for work. Immunizing himself in the long run did pay off. This man injected himself with snake venom for 20 years in an effort to build immunity. He survived 175 snake bites and almost died 20 times from the venom. He lived over 100 years. Yep, it is risky business. You can very easily pass away from injecting too much venom. It's not something I would obviously recommend or anyone else in their right mind. Um, but there we come to the same point again. He lived to over 100 years old. I, I think he was 101, so it's uh, that's pretty incredible. I'm not really sure whether it was because he was a workaholic or if it was the snake venom. Maybe I need to get bit by a snake or something. I don't know. I've never seen an 85-year-old man handle cobras, rattlesnakes. I mean, right now I am drained after working with you for one day, and you do this every day? Every day. Every day. When they make contact, it's just like pricks of needles. I mean, it's so fast. It's just like uh, not even as much as a bee sting does it hurt. But 85 years old when he's talking, he's sharper than me. This man was bitten by venomous snakes 173 times, but he didn't die and lived for over 100 years. He is Bill Host, AKA Snake Man, born in 1910 in the United States. During his life, he worked with more than 3 million venomous snakes. He was bitten by these venomous snakes 173 times. Yeah, so something I've been told about Bill Host is that he had ridiculous work ethic. He would just work all day, every day on this project, on the snakes, you know, his immunization and just running the Serpentarium. So like I say, who knows, was it being a workaholic or was it the venom that kept him alive so long? 
Whatever the case, he certainly made an impact, and it's a shame that he's not around today for them to use his blood as well as Tim Freedy's blood in the research. Here we go. So this is a monocle cobra, and I want you to run us through what happened. Uh, actually, the day I got bit, I was pulling him out, and um, I went to do a free grab because he was hooded up nicely. And right when I did the grab, he opened his mouth, and my thumb went right into his mouth, and Oof. he took advantage of that. Now, for you, that wasn't a big deal because you self-immunized, right? Correct. And so explain that. What does that mean? I use a mixture of nine different venoms. Five of those are different cobras. Um, once you hyper-immunize, after that process is over, every 21 days I give myself a booster shot. Uh, of, it's basically diluted venom and helps to build resistance to the venom. That was Ray Hunter, another person who was... Uh, a recognized expert immunizing himself and whose blood may one day be important to research as well. As you can hear from his explanation, it is a little bit complicated, it's, it's not a simple process. If you were terrible at maths like me, you probably wouldn't want to attempt it. He's been injecting himself with snake venom trying to get superpowers and the results have been fascinating. 35 years ago, Steve Ludwin got the idea to microdose snake venom to try and develop a superhuman immune system. He started with venom from a green tree viper and put a small amount on an incision. He almost lost his arm but refused to go to the hospital because he didn't want his snakes to be taken from him. He continued to play this game with death and did monthly injections and then weekly and after four years, his body was recovering more quickly each time. He once injected a rattlesnake snake, eyelash viper, and green tree viper venom cocktail, which almost ended his life, but now his crazy experiment could be what saves thousands of lives. Typically, anti-venom is created by a donor animal, usually a horse. Steve Ludwin is a really cool guy. Apparently, I don't know if this is true, but I was told he once played on stage with Nirvana, and he's just, you know, kind of the cool kind of maniac. Snakes like that. The immediate feeling from making an injection with snake venom is a feeling of just an intense burning sensation. It's like putting battery acid into your blood. I mean, it's really, really painful. That's a good point to make. Even if you do become immunized to snake venom, there's no way around the fact that it's made to digest. It's always going to be painful. It's always going to be dangerous. What all of these guys do is ridiculously dangerous. They can survive snake bites now if they keep it up. This is the thing as well, the, the immunity that you get, this adaptive immunity has to be maintained. Often it's not as long lasting as we'd like and it's not complete. So it's not a miracle, but it can save your life. Imagine seeking a thrill so intense that you're willing to let one of the most feared creatures on earth bite you. This isn't fiction, it's a reality for some in search of the ultimate high. Today, we dive deep into a realm where danger and desire intertwine the shadowy world of snake venom addiction. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Sunil Reggae, consultant psychiatrist. Welcome to Psychiatry Simplified. And in this video, we're going to be exploring one of the strangest and most dangerous addictions known to humankind. It's a practice that pushes the boundaries of human curiosity and fear, involving one of nature's most dangerous beings, snakes. This is another instance where I'd really like some feedback in the comments, what people think about that. Because uh, I, I stumbled on this clip whilst researching the video, and I really don't know what to make of it. Uh, there's, there's people like Tim Freedy who are evidently going to save lives. What they've done is unorthodox, it's kind of not anything anyone would ever recommend, but the result is the result. Even if someone from a scientific background like myself might not initially like it, you know, there's something to be said for experience and, uh, and breaking boundaries. But this, this guy in this clip is saying that it's an addiction, as if people are getting intoxicated off of injecting snake venom. That's something I really don't know about, and I'm, I'm really not sure if it's true, if we're trying to get at it from another angle and say these people are, you know, they're, they're intoxicating themselves, it's an addiction, it's a psychological issue. Psychology plays a role in everything. Right, if these guys weren't a little bit out there, they probably wouldn't try injecting snake venom in the first place. Could we really say that it's an addiction going from there? I'm not sure. But anyway, it's food for thought. Anyway, 
That's going to do it for today. I hope you think I've been fair and balanced in my analysis of these clips and what's going on. And I also hope you'll like and subscribe and come back next week for more. Thank you very much.